What if I told you the oil your car runs, OW to OR5 W3O, can be the difference between an engine that pushes past 500,000 miles and one that dies before 120,000? Not clickbait, real data. In a massive durability series, 50 identical engines, identical schedules, identical conditions, the choice of viscosity didn't just change a number on paper. It changed fuel economy, wear rates, valve cleanliness, oil consumption, and ultimately how long the engine lived. Yet most drivers and a surprising number of mechanics still pick the wrong oil. Today we're diving into the science, the myths, and the jaw-dropping results behind OW to O versus 5W3O. Stay to the end, I'll reveal the secret viscosity engineers use for long-life testing that your dealer never mentions. Section 1. What the numbers actually mean. OW20 and 5W30 aren't mystical codes, they describe how oil behaves cold and hot. The OW or 5W tells you cold start flow. Old West flows more easily in winter, helping cranking and quick circulation. 5 West is a touch thicker and takes a fraction longer to get everywhere. The second number minus 20 or 30 is the viscosity at roughly to 112 degrees Fahrenheit normal operating temp. 20 is thinner under heat. 30 holds a thicker protective film under load. So, on paper, OW20 looks like the efficiency winner. But how does that thin film hold up under real-world stress? Heat, towing, idling, and long trips. That's where the plot thickens. Section 2. The 50-engine test and what really happened. An independent lab working with the Automotive Testing Institute ran a 200,000-mile durability program across 50 identical engines. Half used OW20, half used 5W30, everything else the same. The results surprised even veteran engineers. By 150,000 miles, the OW20 group delivered a small city driving fuel economy gain, about a 2 to 3% edge, but suffered dramatically more wear, roughly 40 to percent higher bearing wear and about 28% more oil consumption. The 5W3O engines were a bit thirstier at the pump, yes, but their pistons stayed cleaner, the protective oil film held up under heavy load, and timing chains stretched far less. Short-term efficiency versus long-term durability. That's the trade-off in cold black and white. Section 3. Why Automakers Push OW to o. So, why do most new cars come with OW20 stamped on the cap? It's not mysterious, it's economics and regulation. Fleet fuel economy targets and emissions standards nudge manufacturers toward thinner oils because lower viscities shave average MPG and help avoid regulatory penalties. Internal guidance has even admitted that low-viscosity oil is chosen primarily for fuel economy. Under severe duty, a heavier oil can improve durability. In practice, North American specs skew thinner to meet regulatory targets, while long-term durability tests in other markets often use heavier weights. Section 4. When OW20 works and when it doesn't, OW20 absolutely has a place, live where it's cold below freezing, do mostly light short commutes, stick to frequent oil changes, and drive modern engines built with tight clearances, many Toyotas, Hondas and Mazdas shine on OW20 under those exact conditions. But avoid relying on it if you live in hot deserts, tow, haul, drive aggressively, run high RPM as regularly, or own a high mileage engine. Thin oil can shear down under severe heat and load and stop protecting metal surfaces the way a thicker oil would. Section 5. The myth that thinner is always better. Marketers love the line that thinner oil reduces friction. Partly true, thinner oil flows faster, but lubrication is about film strength, not just flow. That microscopic boundary film that separates metal surfaces relies on viscosity and additives like ZDDP for protection. Lower viscosity increases dependence on additive chemistry, which depletes over time. Real lab drains show many OW to O formulations lose a large percentage of their ZDDP protection after a few thousand miles, while heavier oils retain more of it. 
In plain terms, thinner can mean faster wear over time. Section 6, the hidden heat zone that destroys thin oils. Inside modern engines, there's a brutal micro-hot spot between the piston rings and cylinder walls. Temperatures there can spike well above normal coolant tongue, especially with direct injection and turbocharging. Thin oils begin to lose film strength as temperatures climb. Once film strength collapses, microscopic metal-on-metal -metal contact accelerates where quickly. Teardown photos from durability tests show OW to O engines with piston scuffing and varnish near the ring lands, while 5W3O examples keep rings and cylinder walls cleaner much longer. That tiny extra micrometer of oil film from a 30 weight can make a massive difference. Section 7. Oil Consumption and Timing Chain Wear Burning oil between changes isn't imaginary. Lower viscosity oils tend to be more volatile and evaporate under extreme tong, sending deposits into the PCV and coating intake valves, a direct route to carbon buildup and catalytic issues. Thin oils also reduce hydraulic tension or effectiveness on some chains. Technical bulletins from manufacturers document cases where long-term use of ultra-thin oil coincided with chain elongation and timing problems that reversed when heavier oil was used. If you hear ticking at startup or faint metallic rattles, thin oil could be part of the cause. Section 8. Turbo Engines and Extreme Heat Turbos are especially unforgiving, they spin insanely fast and rely on oil for cooling and bearing lubrication. In mild use OW20 may get by, but under constant high exhaust tong or sustained highway loads, thin oils can shear down in a few thousand miles, leaving turbo bearings underprotected. Major turbo suppliers recommend minimum 30 weight service for longevity in hot or heavy duty applications, something to remember if your engine has boost. Section 9. The Secret Middle Ground. Here's the twist engineers quietly prefer. OW3O. It keeps the cold start flow benefits of AO West Oil while offering high temp film strength closer to 5W3O. Labware work shows OW3O can cut wear significantly versus OW20 with only a tiny MPG hit. Fractions of a mile per gallon, making it the best compromise for many drivers who face cold starts but still tow or drive hard. Several European market engines use OW3O as a default for that reason. Section 10. How to choose the right oil for your car. Don't pick oil by cap color or habit. Match viscosity to conditions and driving style. Use the owner's manual as a starting point. Look for ranges, not just a single number. General checklist mechanics use. Live below approximately 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Stick to OW2O or OW3O. Typical temperate driving. 5W30 works well. Regular hot climate heavy loads or towing. Move to one OW3O or heavier synthetics like 5W4O. Always choose oils with the right specs, API, ILSAC, ACA approvals, and prefer full synthetics for long drain intervals and modern tight tolerance engines. Avoid high mileage blends unless your engine actually leaks or burns oil. Those formulas include seal swelling chemistries that can harm healthy seals. Final takeaway, the true automakers won't sell you. If your priority is hitting the best possible MPG numbers for warranty and regulatory reasons, OW20 is an efficient choice. But if you plan to keep the car long term, put on heavy miles, tow or live in heat, a 30 weight full synthetic is likely the smarter long term investment, less oil burn, quieter operation and real durability gains. And if you want the best of both worlds, consider OW3O as a compromise engineers often favor for longevity testing. Now tell me, what oil are you running today? Ever switched between OW2O and 5W3O? Did it change noise, smoothness, or oil consumption? Drop your experience in the comments. Someone else's story could save an engine. If this helped, don't miss the next video. We'll expose the winter startup habit that destroys piston rings faster than bad oil ever could. Like, share, subscribe, and remember, your car doesn't buy marketing. It needs molecules and maintenance.